Now we talk about selected energy policies. Current policy in the United States is pushing towards increasing the use of ethanol while decreasing use of petrol. The government is currently spending $1.2 billion per year on efforts to make hydrogen a viable option. But hydrogen is still limited by the fact that to get viable hydrogen vehicles, breakthroughs in hydrogen technology are still required. The best fuel for the short-term switch appears to be methanol. Hemlich and Farage, 2005. Ethanol should be the next step after a switch to methanol, with hydrogen being the final step, depending, of course, on the breakthroughs which are expected in its storage technology. The main focus, however, is still an ethanol. The Energy Policy Act of 2005 was a modification of the Energy Policy Act of 1992, which had set a goal that 30% of petroleum-based motor fuels should be replaced by 2010. The Energy Policy Act of 2005 set the money as a tax credit for those who purchase alternative fueling property. It applied to natural gas, propane, hydrogen, ethanol, gasoline mixes of E85 or more, and biodiesel B20 or more. It also provides a tax credit for buyers of alternative fuel vehicles. The renewable fuel standard that was passed in 2006 focused some more on producing the celluloidic ethanol instead of other options, and gave greater tax incentives for the production of celluloidic ethanol. Throughout the world, many countries have tried and are trying to change their dependence on fossil fuels to a dependence on renewable and cleaner fuels. In general, the motivation for countries to create policy related to biofuels and renewable energy is based on several things. The desire to curb climate change, the benefits that could be provided to the agricultural sector of a country, such as more employment, and the concept of having independence from foreign energy sources, and thus providing countries with a sense of energy security. Brazil is a world leader in the effort to promote and use ethanol as a fuel. Ethanol production is cheaper in Brazil due to the availability of sugar cane, which as previously stated, requires less processing to provide the needed sugars and carbohydrates for fermenting. Brazil has also set high goals and standards for itself that is required to meet as a nation. Right now, Brazil does not use pure gasoline, but all vehicles that use gasoline are operating on ethanol blends of 20 to 25 percent of the volume. It has also set a goal for itself of changing pure diesel for 5 percent biodiesel by 2013. Starting 2008, all diesel sold must have 2 percent biodiesel. Central America, South America, and the Caribbean have generally poorer nations than Europe or North America. However, there still are other nations than Brazil that have policy for renewable energy. Like Brazil, Australia is a producer of sugar from sugar cane. This allows Australia to have a source from which to obtain ethanol. Australia is also one of the world's largest emitters of carbon dioxide per person, which makes it a prime candidate for reforming energy policy with an increased amount of biofuels. Analysis has been done, and many ideas for reducing the production of carbon dioxide have been suggested that may also be viewed as some possible guidelines for what can be done in the United States. In Europe, Conventional fuel prices could be considered exorbitant by the rest of the world. This is due to the taxes imposed on the fuels and has served well to decrease the amount of fuel used. In countries such as France, biofuels like ethanol are given an exemption from the gasoline excise tax as an attempt to promote the use of cleaner burning fuels. Also, in terms of production, subsidies for crops used for producing ethanol are provided and calculated by the area being cultivated. 
The EU also supports biofuels because biofuels provide jobs for many agricultural families. The EU has set a goal of itself of 20% reliance on biofuels by 2020. It has already enacted policies such as Renewable Fuels Directive, which made 2% of transport fuels from renewable resources its goal by 2005, and 5.75% by 2010. Africa has some countries that are capable of producing ethanol. South Africa was the first and produces its ethanol from coal. Coal ethanol is said to be of lesser quality than other source materials that are processed, so South Africa has some trouble with exporting the ethanol it produces. In general, Africa is made of poorer nations that may not have a large internal market for ethanol and biodiesel if some further development of other industries does not occur. Asia is a section of the globe that appears to have less petroleum deposits per person than any other section of the world, which makes Asia a prime candidate for the use of the renewable sources of energy that biofuels may be. Malaysia enacted the National Biofuel Policy on March 21, 2006, that states its goals producing palm biodiesel for internal use and for exportation. Malaysia is the biggest producer in the world for palm oil. So now, if the market for palm oil lacks, the oil can still be put to good use as biodiesel. Indonesia is the second largest producer of palm oil behind Malaysia. They have planned a switch to biofuels developed from palm oil and jatropha within the next five years. India is also using jatropha kukas to produce ethanol because of the plant's ability to grow in arid and semi-arid regions. India has established for itself a national mission on biodiesel since 2003 that requires 5% mixes of ethanol be used. While it may seem that biofuels are off to a good start in Asia, it is stunning to realize how much of the burgeoning renewable energy market would have to go to China. China is currently the biggest producer of ethanol in the region. Unfortunately, even if every drop of ethanol was dedicated to fuel and the industry continues to grow in size as it has been recently, it has been calculated that it will not be enough to switch China to a 10% blend of ethanol with gasoline. Japan is attempting to comply with the Kyoto Protocol. They have a problem in that they cannot produce much of the way of biomass fuel because they do not have sufficient land and the cost of that land will not allow biofuels to be competitive economically. 